I'm Philip, I'm from Endless, um, and this is going to be a slightly different talk from normal, uh, with only a little bit of discussion of software and more discussion of climate science and social issues. Um, I'm going to look at the impact of the GNOME project as a whole in terms of its carbon emissions and to see what we need to and what we can do to reduce those emissions. Um, I'm not a climate change scientist, I'm a software engineer. Um, well, I've read, I've read around the subject. Um, I welcome any feedback you have on the modelling I've done. Um, I don't have all of the answers in this talk. It's more of a, a way to start the discussion and start thinking about what we can do to reduce things. Um, so climate change is relevant to everyone. Um, there are very few big easy wins in reducing the impact that we as humans have on the climate. Um, most of them have been done already or are in progress. Um, so reducing the impact involves all of us and it will have impacts on all of us. Um, but it's got many benefits aside from not damaging the environment. Um, in our case, these can be things such as more performance software and faster CI pipelines to pick a couple that I'll get to later in the talk. Limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees C above the baseline that was set a few decades ago is a global priority. It's undeniable, it's got demonstra demonstrably negative effects and it affects all of us. Um, it's, I'm sure everyone knows, it's no longer really a matter of discussing whether we can avoid climate change, it's a matter of mitigating it and making sure that it doesn't increase above that limit of 1.5 degrees C. Um, in order to do that, we need to make large infrastructure and society changes in the next 10 years um, and emissions need to decline by 45% in that time. Um, they need to reach net zero by 2050, which is in 30 years time. So we've got time, but we don't have masses and masses of time. Global impacts um, across the world, people and land and the weather become more severe with warming above 1.5 degrees C. Um, note that that's an average of 1.5 degrees C across the whole surface of the globe. So when we do see warming of 1.5 degrees C, it will actually be higher than that on land and lower than that on uh, water bodies, like oceans and seas. Um, so it's, it's more than you think it is. A very brief introduction to climate science. Um, some of you might know this already, I apologise for that, um, but I thought I'd just go through it very briefly. Greenhouse gases, GHGs, they trap heat in the atmosphere rather than allowing it to radiate to space. Um, the main GHGs are water vapour, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide and ozone. Some of these are more potent than others, but for the purposes of comparisons between them so that we can work on a common basis, we convert them all to carbon dioxide using several conversion factors. There is a global carbon budget for the remaining permissible emissions that we can make as a planet before global warming of a certain level, like 1.5 degrees C or 2 degrees C, becomes more likely than not. Um, and that remaining global carbon budget is measured in teratons of CO2 equivalent emissions. Um, it's an open question how this budget, which we know to within certain confidence intervals, it's an open question how that budget gets split between different countries and between different industries and sectors and how it all gets allocated out. The best way to decarbonise is to not emit carbon in the first place. That is the golden rule. Um, we, de we need to reduce consumption of resources which entail carbon emissions, by exam for example, by using less electricity. Um, or by using less petrol or coal or gas. Um, that would mean we don't use any of the remaining carbon budget. The second best way is to switch your consumption of these to lower carbon or zero carbon equivalents. So, for example, by using solar power rather than coal power or um, by not using a fossil fuel car. Um, when you're doing these switches, you need to be mindful of the fact that even if a power source, for example, is zero carbon in what it produces, there is a carbon cost in manufacturing it and distributing it, installing it, maintaining it, decommissioning it and disposing of it. So it's not, nothing ever comes for free. And those all eat into the big budget. There's some terminology that will come up throughout this talk several times. Um, and I'll try and use consistent units to allow for comparisons across the talk. Um, emissions are conventionally measured in tons of CO2 equivalent. Um, 
so that uses the conversion factors for other greenhouse gases to convert it all to CO2. Um, energy is measured in kilowatt hours um, rather than the more conventional joules, uh, as this is what electricity transmission systems use, so it's, it's more a convention within the industry. Uh, and then carbon intensity is the amount of carbon emissions per unit of energy generated or consumed. Um, so a typical figure for a medium polluting country at the moment is 200 grams of CO2 emitted per kilowatt hour. For a low pollution supply like hydro, the number would be more like 40. And for a high pollution supply like coal, it's more like 800. So there's a factor of 20 between the low and the high and a factor of four between the average and the high. Um, some rough comparisons to give you a, a baseline of where we are. Uh, the target for the average UK citizen to emit per year by 2020 is 10.5 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. Currently, UK citizens emit about 14, um, and that's roughly the same amongst all countries of sort of a certain uh, economic status. Um, the world average per person is only 5 tonnes uh, per year. Taking a transatlantic return flight emits 2 tonnes. Um, taking a short return flight, such as within Europe, emits half a tonne. Um, a 300 kilometre train journey, which is about two hours on a high speed train, emits 0 0.01 tonnes. Um, but this can vary significantly based on whether it's an electric train or a diesel train and how full it is. But that's, it's a rough guideline to give you sort of the orders of magnitude. So, what does GNOME emit? Um, the first step to reducing the impact is to work out what our current emissions are, and then we can focus on the low-hanging fruit, just like any software optimization problem, and try and reduce it. So the three areas I've focused on are transport, power consumption by servers and networks, and power consumption by the users of GNOME. Um, I'm going to go through each of these in turn and estimate the contribution to our overall carbon emissions. Um, all the numbers here are estimates, but they should be correct to the right order of magnitude. Um, a lot of the source numbers I used, I had to estimate. It was quite interesting to find how little information there was about, for example, how many users there are of GNOME, uh, or how, how long each day they use their computers for. Um, but the model can have new numbers plugged in as we get them available. So it cannot be updated and reanalyzed um, as we find out more. So looking at the transport, um, the emissions for it almost entirely come from events such as conferences and hackfests. Um, the more people that come to an event, the, or the further they travel, the higher its carbon emissions will be. Um, for each event, I estimated the number of long-haul flights, like transatlantic ones, and the number of short-haul flights, like across Europe, um, out of the total number of attendees. Some people might not fly at all, so they're, they're just ignored. Um, the data and the methodology for this is in the Git repository, and there'll be a link to that at the end. Um, so the mean emissions per long-haul flight were 2.2 tonnes, um, and there are roughly 33 long-haul flights per year, um, which gives total annual emissions about 72. Uh, for short-haul flights, I estimated a flight from Paris to Thessaloniki, and there were 266 of those, um, and they averaged 0.61 tonnes per flight, so that's 160 tonnes, which is quite a lot more than the, what's, uh, twice as much as the long-haul flights. Um, it's likely to be a slight underestimate because the short-haul flights for GNOME Asia are going to be slightly longer than Paris to Thessaloniki. Um, so as a reminder, the UK 2020 target is 